about uh, gauge theory, but it will be uh, more an introduction to gauge theory. So more advanced uh, topics will be covered later, uh, the next weeks, uh, but in this, uh, in these lectures, I wanted to cover basics of gauge theory so the, that you have uh, something to rely on uh, for the next weeks. In any case, so let me start with a basic idea in, uh, behind uh, essentially any gauge theory. Uh, as, f uh, as long as it's concerned uh, with uh, manifold invariance. Okay, I see. Uh, so what we have uh, is uh, we have uh, uh, an infinite dimensional uh, Manifold, so the dimension of C is infinity, will make this more precise later in the course. And the Lie group G, uh, which acts on this infinite dimensional manifold, and this uh, Lie group will be typically also infinite dimensional. Now, a uh, second piece uh, of data is a map F from C into V, where this is a G presentation. And so what we do is, uh, uh, this is required to be a G invariant, so F is G. F is G equivariant, which means that F at M point G is G inverse F of M. So the standard convention is that uh, the Lie group G acts on this manifold on the right and acts uh, on the left on the target manifold. That's why uh, you have G inverse over here. And if you take uh, a fixed point, so say the origin in V, and consider the pre-image of the origin, uh, you still have an action of G on this submanifold. And if you quotient this, you will obtain something which is known as a moduli space. So this is y by G. Now, uh, this may be uh, a bit ill-behaved be because uh, this may fail to be, for instance, a manifold. It may fail to be a nice topological space. But let me assume that uh, if I remove points from here which have non-trivial stabilizers, I will get a manifold. So I will define M star with those points in the pre-image so that the stabilizer of M is trivial, and I quotient this by G. So I will assume that this is now a smooth smooth compact oriented manifold dimension d, a finite uh, dimension d. As such, uh, this has a fundamental class, so we have m star as a well-defined homology class in the uh, HD of uh, a space. Uh, so uh, let me write b star set, where b star is simply uh, you know, uh, the space that we have started with, so if you remove, if you remove points with uh, non-trivial stabilizers and divide by the gauge group, we have some topological space, and uh, we have a well-defined homology class in this space. Okay, very good. Uh, so, uh, 
but we want to have numbers out of that. So this uh, homology class sort of is an interesting object on its own, but we want to have uh, to extract numbers in a, in some way, and this is uh, one way to do this. So assume we have a short exact sequence. So in other, uh, well, it's too short. So there is another group G. In other words, we have a normal subgroup G0 in G, and the quotient is uh, the straight G, which is assumed to be a finite dimensional Lie group. Now uh, we can form uh, also the so-called framed uh, moduli space. So this is m hat star. So again, I, I will take the pre-image of the origin, but I will divide by the subgroup G0. Uh, and what we will get, in fact, we will get m hat so star as a principal bundle over uh, m with the structure group G. So this is something that I will explain today in the lecture in more detail. But the point is that uh, once we have uh, a principal bundle, we can uh, associate to this uh, characteristic classes. So say eta, and assume this is in HD of uh, M star Z. Right, once we have uh, a, a cohomology class in degree D, uh, and we have a D-dimensional manifold, we can integrate this class over M, and what we get uh, is an integral like this, and this is the invariant we are after. Right, so uh, what we want to understand uh, in this course, uh, why is this well defined, how uh, the uh, details work, and why is this is interesting. So the rough, or the rough plan uh, for the lectures uh, is uh, like this. So today I will uh, tell you a few details about uh, bundles connections, uh, curvature, uh, characteristic classes, and so on. Uh, in the next uh, two lectures, so I will tell you uh, some tools from analysis. So the keywords here are uh, for the whole maps, uh, elliptic operators, and so on. And finally, in the last two lectures, I will talk about an example of a gauge theory which is uh, particularly well behaved with respect to this scheme, and this will be the cyborg written. gauge theory. All right. If there are no questions to that, uh, let us start with basics. So is there anything to erase uh, the blackboards? Yes? Uh, so essentially what, what, you, uh, what you sort of want to uh, define is that uh, C star is uh, the set of all those points M in C as a trivial stabilizer. And quotient this by G. 
Uh, maybe you want to put a little bit more restrictions. Uh, so what you want to have is that this is a nice topological space, something like a manifold. So this would be uh, an ideal case. Any, any other question? Okay. No problem. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, so uh, I assume that most of you know most of what I'm going to say today. Uh, the purpose of uh, two lectures today is to give you essentially a bunch of keywords so that you have a chance to pick up uh, something that you have perhaps uh, missed in your uh, lectures or uh, having a chance to uh, look up yet. In any case, so let us start with vector bundles. So a vector bundle is essentially just a family of uh, vector spaces parametrized by points in a, uh, say, a manifold M, or more generally uh, of a topological space. And this is, is uh, assumed to be uh, locally trivial. Which just means that, uh, you know, uh, whenever you pick a point, M in your base manifold, there is a neighborhood U uh, and a map Psi, say from uh, the, so we have a natural projection map into M from the pre-image of U into U cross RK. And we have the uh, diagram which, so here is Psi in U cross RK, and this diagram commutes. Now, if you have a vector bundle, a natural thing to consider is uh, the section. So what is a section? This is just a map from M to E, such that, uh, so this is a section if the composition of pi and s is a, uh, is a identity on M. In other words, what I have, I pick a vector in uh, each fiber, and this depends mostly on M. So uh, I will always assume that uh, I work in smooth category, but you can, of course, work in uh, topological category or uh, any other categories that you like. Now, uh, if you have a uh, vector bundle, you can make uh, constructions with uh, this vector bundle. So essentially, any constructions that you know from a linear algebra which doesn't require a choice of base goes through to the uh, category of vector bundles. So uh, in particular, you can construct, uh, say, lambda p, e, so e dual, and the morphisms of e, and all these are vector bundles, and so on. Now, uh, since the uh, topic of this school is to make uh, connections, so let us make a connection. Uh, here uh, you go. So you know from a uh, basic analysis that this is, uh, it is useful to differentiate functions, and we want to also to differentiate uh, sections. And here is how it goes. So uh, if you have uh, if gamma of E denotes the space of all sections, Then the covariant derivative is uh, or a connection uh, 
uh, as a as an, our linear map, uh, which satisfies the Leibniz rule, which means that uh, nabla of f times s is df tensor s plus f nabla s. And this holds for any smooth function uh, on uh, the base manifold uh, m. Now, uh, well, you can easily prove that uh, any vector bundle uh, has a connection, uh, but uh, if you have a connection, it's never unique. So uh, if you have one connection nabla, you can easily construct another connection, say nabla prime, which is just nabla plus A, where A is a one form on M whose values in the endomorphisms of E. On the other hand, you can also show if you have two connections and you take their difference, uh, then the difference is a one form with values in the endomorphism of E. And what you uh, establish in this way as our basic fact is that uh, the space of all connections this is uh, denoted by A of E is an affine space modeled on omega 1 and E. Okay. Now, <coughs> Once you have a uh, connection, uh, you can construct uh, a sequence, uh, namely uh, very similar to the Durham complex. So what you start with, you start with zero forms with values in E. So these are just sections of E. And you can consider one forms with values in E, and so on. Now, uh, so here you have the covariant derivative, which uh, ends exactly in the space of one forms. You can uh, extend this to an operator d nabla, which I will uh, define in a second. So once you have a one form, uh, or maybe uh, even any uh, k form, so that uh, the alpha be a k form uh, with values in E, so assume you can write uh, alpha locally as omega tensor S, where omega is a, a k form on M and S is a section of E. So uh, we'll define the nabla of alpha to be the omega tensor uh, s plus minus one to the degree of omega wedge nabla s. So in that way, uh, you, you have an operator the nabla here and the nabla and so on. Now, the basic fact is that uh, unlike for the Durham uh, complex, the, uh, you know, uh, the composition is not zero anymore. So this will be T nabla as well. Instead, if you compute D nabla, D nabla, uh, the, the D nabla squared, but you can establish that this is an algebraic operator, which is F nabla, this is a two form values in the endomorphism bundle of E. Right? And this is called the curvature of number. Now, if you pick uh, local coordinates, 
say x1 and so on xn Uh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Uh, <clears throat> if you choose local coordinates on M, then uh, what you can do, you can uh, ask yourself what is Nabla D over DXI, Nabla D over DXJ applied to a section S. You can compare this to Nabla D over DXJ Nabla D over DXI, uh, again applied to S. And their difference is exactly the curvature form F Nabla applied to D over DXI, D over DXJ. So in other words, uh, the curvature uh, form uh, is a measure of uh, the non-commutativity of partial uh, covariant derivatives. Right, so unlike in the uh, classical analysis, partial uh, covariant derivatives do not commute. Okay, now locally, uh, which means if you pick a, a local trivialization of your vector bundle, you can write uh, your connection nabla as D plus, say, A, where A is a one form on M uh, with values in, uh, say, uh, G, L, K, R, so just uh, in matrices. And uh, you easily compute that the curvature form is given again locally as D, A plus a wedge A. And so uh, by A wedge A here means uh, simultaneous multiplication as matrices and taking wedge product of the elements. Okay. Uh, and now, uh, if you have one connection, uh, you can construct many, many connections uh, in a very uh, standard way. So. Uh, if you have a G, which is a section of the endomorphism bundle of E, uh, maybe let me uh, denote by G E the set of all those endomorphisms of E, such set at each point G. Uh, this is invertible, so we have G L E M. Now this is called the gauge group. And if you have one connection, you can construct, uh, and you pick some G in uh, the gauge group, you can cons uh, construct another connection which acts on the section S just by, uh, so what you do, you multiply G with S, you have another connection, you apply your initial connection nabla to that, and you apply, uh, apply the inverse of G to that. And so uh, in that case, nabla uh, and nabla G are called gauge equivalent. And so what you can uh, prove uh, quite easily is that the curvature uh, essentially uh, is tensorial with respect to this uh, gauge equivalent section of the gauge group. So, uh, so here is an exercise for you. So compute the curvature of the uh, connection nabla G.
So <coughs> one way to deal with vector bundles uh, is the following. So you can uh, define your objects, for instance, your connection in a uh, local trivialization, and then show that this doesn't change when you uh, change your local trivialization. Uh, and what, uh, what this, uh, so this is a way which is very, uh, very much used in uh, physics. Uh, but uh, mathematically, a uh, good move uh, at this point is to consider all possible uh, local frames at the same time. And so what this uh, yields is a notion of the principal bundle. So what is a principal bundle? This is the following thing. So uh, you have a manifold P, and again a projection, say, pi, to a base manifold M, uh, with the following properties. So first of all, uh, uh, you know, uh, part of the data is also a Lie group G, uh, which acts, so G acts on P, and uh, pi is a G invariant, that is, as pi of p, secondly, for any point m in m, the preimage uh, of m has an induced action of g, and this is free and transitive. And this is also locally trivial in the same way uh, as a vector bundle is a locally trivial structure. Uh, so in other words, what we have here is not a, a family of vector bundles, but a family of Lie groups parameterized by a point of your base manifold. Now, if you have a vector bundle, uh, there is sort of a canonical way to construct the principal bundle. So here is the definition. Uh, so E is a vector bundle, then the frame bundle of E is just the set of uh, all uh, isomorphisms from, say, R, um, I'll say, frame M, where M is an M, and this is a set of all uh, isomorphisms from RK into EM. So it's easy to see that there is a, uh, an action of GLK, and this makes uh, the frame bundle uh, into the principal uh, GLK uh, bundle. Now, uh, it turns out that you can invert this construction. So if you have a principal G bundle, uh, you can always construct uh, a vector bundle. And this is called the associated bundle. So, uh, so I assume that P is a principal G bundle. And you have a representation rho, so G into GLK. Uh, say R, then what you do, you, c you can uh, construct the space P times RK and divide by an action of the group G, where the action is, so you take P and uh, say X, multiply this by G, say on the right, and this is just pi G, rho g inverse x. And you, what you can easily establish is that the quotient is a vector bundle with a natural projection to m. Right, what this, this is known as the associated vector bundle. 
Now, uh, what I'm trying to say essentially is that there is a certain equivalence between the notions of vector bundle and principal bundle. Uh, however, uh, it is uh, sometimes much more convenient to work with principal bundles rather than vector bundles. Uh, and uh, sort of one ad advantage which you can get here, if you vary uh, your representation row, you will get many vector bundles which are associated to the same principal bundle. Okay, now uh, there is also a notion of a connection uh, for the principal bundle, and this is as follows. So, uh, connection on P is uh, just a one form A with values, so on the total space of P, with values in the Lie algebra of G, so G is just the Lie algebra of G, uh, with, uh, with the following properties. So first of all, uh, A is G equivariant, uh, which means uh, <coughs> The following, uh, so I have an action uh, by, a, a, by an element of the Lie group G on the uh, principal bundle P, this is uh, denoted as RG, so I can pull back my one form omega, and this is required to be the uh, a joint uh, action of uh, G minus one on omega. So omega takes values in the Lie algebra. This is naturally a representation of the Lie group, and so we can act uh, by this element uh, on an element of the Lie algebra. And the second condition is that uh, a, um, you know, uh, let, let me just write. So uh, a applied to k xi is xi for any xi in G. Now, what is KXI? KXI is just the infinitesimal action of G on P. In other words, you take a one parameter subgroup generated by XI. This gives you a curve on P, and you take uh, its tangent vector uh, at the point zero. Now, uh, 